I was going to defer to somebody else, but um, any big picture priorities or anything like that this summer that you want to uh, see from your team or implement or yeah, not not like really. Just um, you know, I think we're very fortunate um, in today's landscape uh, right now, really to be talking to one person, right? And so, like you know, you go and talk about some of your defensive responsibilities and. And some, some different actions, your ball screen D or ISO ball screen D or double in the post and how your rotations go. And, you know, there's only one guy out there that hasn't been in our practices before that was in our practice today. So, um, obviously, Miles is, you know, with USA Basketball right now, so he'll have to get up to speed um, when he gets here. But more than anything, just trying to, you know, defensively know what we're doing and, uh, and giving them our defensive guidelines and principles so we can play a lot more in the summer, if that makes any sense, just going on a foreign trip, just uh, to get better. If you sit there and you do all drill work, you know, all summer, just go round and round, you know, it, it, it makes for a pretty long summer when you're, you're going on your foreign trip. So um, just trying to get some of those things installed so we know what we're doing. Is that a change this year that you want your guys playing more as opposed to? No, it's just something I've always done when we went on a foreign trip. Anything new you're trying to put in this year or anything like that? Or? Yeah, we're not going to turn it over. <laughs> <laughs> we put that in. So, uh, no, not not really. Just uh, Obviously, you're always looking at different actions offensively um, to score the basketball. But one thing that happens is, like, you also don't want to hamper individuals. Um, you want things to kind of, you know, go organically in June, July, August, September, October until you get into things because guys can make improvements. You know, this guy can't do this, this guy can't do this. Instead of really focusing on what they can do, because you really see guys to, to make big jumps, especially guys from their freshman to sophomore year. So, speaking of. Since you have such a group of known quantities on this team, where do you gauge improvement from those guys that came back? How do you know? Right. Um, I think, you know, once we get to competition and playing, I, I think more than anything, you gauge it through their confidence or lack thereof, which you don't want to see. Sometimes you do see. Like, I talked to them the other day just about, you know, expectations and how successful of a season that we can have. Um, but you also got to believe in yourself. And you believe in yourself through work. And the more work you put in individually, the more you feel better about yourself. I think as a player or as a young person, we're all starving for somebody else to instill that in us. Like I'm, I try to be as positive as possible to do that, but there's really only one person that can give you confidence in yourself. But you get that through your work. You get that by living in the gym and just being confident in what you can do. Obviously, you have to have that, uh, and you should have that, just being here by itself. But, it, but through competition sometimes and, and through some failures, you know, everybody doubts themselves. You know, it's the old story about, you know, the hero and the goat. You know, they both felt the same thing, but they both didn't do the same thing. you got to be able to push through that adversity and allow that adversity to make you stronger. Was it like Christmas morning when you found out the news that Zach was going to be coming back for another year with uh, you? Well, the one thing I think that gets lost, especially with fans, uh, is they just want him to come back. You know, you know, and that's it. We want him to do what's best for him. And when you care about somebody, you know, that, that's what you want. And the dream of playing into the NBA is every, every single one of these guys, that's their dream. And if this is the best year for him to do it, and that's the feedback that he's getting, then so be it. The one thing that jumped out for me was, you know, he probably was the most improved player in the country. I don't think there's, you know, there's not an award for that, is there? I don't think we have that one. Um, but he probably was, you know, being the National Player of the Year and making that kind of jump. So why leave the environment you've made that kind of improvement if you want to have that long career? With that being said, if he could have got somebody that would have guaranteed a first-round pick or somebody guaranteed that he would be in their rotation, he would have jumped on that, and rightfully so. And uh, he, I, he was still going to get a guaranteed contract, but he was going to be in the second round. He was going to be in the 30s or the 40s. Um, but I think he just felt like one more season, you know, keep getting better, you know, keep expanding. You can't lose the perspective that this will be a seventh year of organized basketball. So my seventh year of organized basketball was in sixth grade. So it's, you just got to keep that in perspective. Like he's still growing as a player, um, even though he was dominant this past year. What do you want to see him get better at this year? 
Um, just the same things he improved at last year. You know, I think his decision making, his deep, his ball screen defense, his rebounding, his passing, they all improved. And so just keep getting better at those things. You don't really have to reinvent the wheel. You just got to be better at what you do. I think what you see in a workout for him is he's a lot better shooter. And like he, and he didn't shoot before. And that was something, you know, that, you know, when you shoot 58% from the line, I'm not going to let you shoot threes. You know, just obviously, right, at 15 feet, you're 58%, you move back six feet. Um, but then when you shoot 73, 74%, I think that's something that he could do, you know, shoot perimeter shot, shoot that. The one thing about it is he, he is such a tough cover because when he's physical and he's diving and he's doing stuff, like we're living in that bonus. We're living at that free throw line. We're getting layups. We're getting people in foul trouble. Jump shots is not going to get us there. Even though that I think that's something that he showed in the NBA that, you know, you know, he's not superior there, but you know, he, he can definitely knock down an open shot. Um, you mentioned players' improvements from years one to year two. Mm -hmm. Braden and Fletcher obviously were pretty good right away. Right. Uh, what kind of jumps can those guys make this year? Well, I think for really our team, it's not them. You know, the thing that surprised me more than anything was our inability to make open shots. So we had the number one efficient offense in the country on February 1st. We ended up 12th. In the last six weeks of the season, we just kind of collectively lost confidence, you know, on not shooting tough shots, but shooting wide open shots. So I think just, you know, having some poise, you know, being able to knock down some of those shots and, and, and just have that confidence that I talked about earlier, I think that's going to help everybody. I thought Braden did a really good job of finding people. You know, he needs to make a jump. And, and, and just his poise when things maybe don't go his way as much, you know, and just staying with him and, uh, and, and then getting better on the defensive end. You know, Fletch was a guy that made some huge shots for us, you know, early in the season, early in the Big Ten season, and then didn't make as many as it went along. But that's not something that I worry about with those guys. They're going to make shots for us. But it, it's just hard. It's hard on your body. It's demanding on you. And, and sometimes, you know, you look at a guy like John Diebler at Ohio State, you look at Dakota Mathias at Purdue, both of them shot around 20, 23% as freshmen, and then you see them just be lights out for three years after that. It just takes a time, and it takes that toll on your body when you got to get used to it. So, you know, I, I definitely think both of those guys will make a big jump the next year. What do you hope that Lance adds? So I think he'll be great just because he has a feel. You know, he's been through it. You know, he was here for five years. Um, you know, he had every role. You know, he redshirted. Uh, you know, he averaged eight, nine minutes his freshman year to play all the time, especially when Klein and Carson got it going there down the stretch. Um, you know, I, I stuck with those guys more. And then he was a three-year starter. You know, he had a year where he was lights out on the road shooting threes. He had a year where he struggled shooting from three. Um, he really knows our offense. So I just think, you know, just from being and having the success that he did and some of the ups and downs, I think that's the one thing um, that we can learn is just like getting through adversity. I thought we pushed through adversity during the season, but obviously when you get in that tournament and you have that adversity at the wrong time, you know, it, it's a killer. How do you think Cam's going to contribute this year? And how do you think well, I think, you know, what we lacked last year was some overall quickness and some overall athleticism on the perimeter. And I think Cam and Miles Colton will give us that athleticism. I think Lance Jones will give us that athleticism, that quickness, defense, experience. So I think all three of those guys can really help us, you know, on the perimeter with those things. Man, 